a game where even though it's you know violent, you can you can be um, I mean, you can be not the alpha gamer yeah. right. at the table and still win. So why don't you begin by introducing yourselves, what your role is in the project, and then kind of give us the convention pitch uh, for Stitches. Sure. Uh, so I'm Jason. Um, I am the co-founder of Norwester Games. We, we pretty much co-design. We don't have a split that a lot of people do with the kind of design and business side being separate. Um, I, I'm Doug. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we definitely design together uh, and pitch in when we can to... to push the project forward and to keep the company uh, properly administrated. So <laughs> lots of learning opportunities. Yeah. And give us the lowdown on Stitches. What is it? Why should people be in, uh, excited to give it a try? Yeah, so Stitches is a, a game for three to seven players. It takes about 20 minutes to play. And you're a Frankenstein monsterish thing that has woken up, abandoned in the dark woods, uh, and you're trying to upgrade your body parts and such in order to defeat the abomination, which is also running around the dark woods, uh, lurking around. So it's opportunity to, to play as a monster, to rip limbs off yourself and put new things on, or from uh, rip limbs off of somebody else. Uh, there's, a, oh, we're playing with that with that Frankensteinish monster feel of you know, is he a monster or is he trying to? He's trying to form some sort of community and is rejected. But of course, we're, all the players are monsters, and so. What does that then look like when they, as they gradually acquire language and try to cooperate a bit? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that perfectly segues into one of the things I wanted to kind of pick your brain as developers on, which was this element of language. So as you're playing Stitches, uh, through certain actions you start getting words that you can use. But other than those, you're limited to grunts yeah. and growls and gestures uh, with the other players. Um, I found this hilarious in the in the couple times I've played this through with a couple friends. Um, where did the idea come from? Was it something that was in the inception of the game, and what purpose does it serve as as the people making the game and, and developing it? Yeah, so it started out. I mean, Stitches actually started out as a uh, a spaceship game <laughs> where you take parts off and add them back together, and then we kind of decided that that theme was a little. Um, a little more conventional. So then we went this monster route. Right. And we wanted, you know, we started off with the, with the physical pieces, and then we wanted a separate win track, essentially. We had thought about, all right, well, you can win by becoming the strongest monster, or you can win by becoming the smartest monster, right. the most communicative. The, the silver monster. tongue monster who, <laughs> who convinces the other monsters to follow him. <clears throat> And so we had the words and the gestures and the grunts as your negotiating skills at that point, as you're trying to lobby other people, other players to attack Bob or Mary. Um, but as we work, work with the language and the words, we didn't feel like the win condition was really right, just on, like, get five words or make a sentence. And the teamwork aspect sort of came up out of that, the idea that, oh, and with common language, we can actually, that's a way to solve this problem rather than just being the strongest monster, so. The other thing we had talked about is at one point was actually just taking language out altogether. Right. Um, but it's super fun to say yeah. squishy in a monster, <laughs> right. right? So right, absolutely. Yeah, we couldn't get rid yeah. of it. The, yeah. the growling and the grunting, and you know, we don't want obviously people can say words if they if they need to. <laughs> you know, I, I need to go answer the phone. That's fine. We don't want you to be limited entirely oh, to wow. these words. <laughs> but but for those for those periods between rounds where people are taking stock of what's happening at the table and Oh look! Look at his tentacles. How, how are we going to get that sort of that table talk, uh, that negotiation into something that's just ridiculous? Yeah. Um, but, but people can still find a way. People can still find a way yeah. to put these words together and get their point across. So we enjoy that, and we enjoy seeing players come up with new ways just to mess with the words and um, and try to actually use those that li those limited vocabularies to sway people at the table. Absolutely. And you, you kind of led in nicely to the other, when I was looking at Stitches and I've played it, there, there were kind of two things beyond the very timely theme, the timely Halloween theme, um, yeah. that jumped out to me, which being this, this word mechanic. 
and also the semi-cooperative nature of Stitches, which I really liked. And I wanted to find out, it sounds like maybe there was, this was something that started with Inception, but what were, what are some of the challenges in divining, in designing a semi-cooperative game that wouldn't have been present were you doing this as a purely, you know, competitive game? Um, and then why did you choose to go semi-competitive? Semi-cooperative, sorry. Yeah, it works either way. We sometimes call it semi-competitive. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a short enough game and it, it's goofy enough that at a certain point getting too worked up over a winner or loss is not really the point of it. Um, so there's two elements that, that might lead to it being semi-co-op. The, the teamwork, obviously, we, they're, it's fun to develop a game with, with partnerships and um, this is not as heavy a game as like Battlestar uh, Galactica, but that's that's a team game. It's just it's hidden roles, and here the roles the, the teams emerge and fall apart throughout the game. Right, um, right. So yeah, absolutely. part of it was just I think that what attracted us once we unlocked that idea of teams, um, it made uh, it made it more accessible for a lot of people. I think it people had a it wasn't this cutthroat game, even though we're ripping throats off sometimes. But it was a, a game where even though it's you know, violent, you can you can be, um, I mean, you can be not the alpha gamer yeah. right. at the table and still win. Right. Yeah, we, we wanted it to be family friendly. You know, the art really lends itself to that. Um, Absolutely. And the, the teamwork and, <laughs> right. and the rock, paper, scissors, easy to learn right. mechanic all lends it. And the, so having it be at least semi-cooperative and not fully cooperative really ties into that audience um, as well, right? Uh, and then we have the you know the idea that the abomination can win, and that does mm. sort of cast all the monsters against that one that one beast. Um, but we don't want it to be like a guilt mechanic. Right. Like you can have an um, <coughs> archipelago or, or, or I can never say that word archipelago, archipelago where it's like uh, pay the bank or else we all lose. And, and now I'm gonna skip out on the check. And um, so and the, it, yeah, we didn't want to have too much of that that. Uh, that um, everyone has to join together to to pay some amount to fight off the big bad. Yeah. Um, and in terms of, so we were not thinking of teams from the from the inception. It kind of evolved out of the way we were using language. Yeah. Hmm. Um, you know, as a well, if we're not using language to win, what are we using it for? Not explicitly to win. The, the right, explicitly yeah. to win. Yeah. yeah. As a win condition. And it clicked. People liked it, mm. and we. Follow that, yeah. follow that response, and <laughs> yeah. it works. You know, and I will say, you know, there are there are groups oh, yeah. of hardcore gamers that that don't like it. Like they want a winner, or they want you know the cooperative aspect. Um, and we just kind of have to be okay with that, right? <laughs> Some people are gonna like it, right? People. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If we went fully co-op, we would make we'd have to make the bosses much harder. Yeah, yeah. Because, that's true. And if we went fully competitive, we have to make them a little bit easier mm. because there's gonna be too much backbiting <clears> and king making otherwise. So this we felt how our you know our our system of rock paper scissors which we didn't even start with we had right. like power numbers and attack and defense and this was our like polished down um, just to like how can we create a system that is accessible and doesn't take too much math doesn't take math oh, first, beyond yeah. counting um, <laughs> and then that how that system sort of played out with our bosses almost demands this partnership. People can still win by themselves, and we still mm. see that regularly. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, about maybe 30, 40 percent of the time, depends on the group yeah, size. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's we sort of didn't want to fight it too much. Once that that emerged, we said, okay, this is how it, it works, and we that's how it works best. We yeah. think. Cool. Um, so with the Kickstarter coming out, I did want to pick your brains a little bit about what you're doing to. Uh, give your Kickstarter the best case. I think with lots of different developers out there, with lots of different crowdfunding options, it's interesting to find out what people are doing to set themselves apart or what challenges they've found they've run into in preparing that might be something that they can pass on to other developing teams. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that we have anything you know unique <laughs> to offer the vast amount of material that's out there already. Right. Um, So I mean, originally we wanted summer, and then they just didn't, wasn't going to happen. Yeah. So October happened to be a good time for our Frankenstein, but and we're going to ride that. But it wasn't something we planned for necessarily. Uh, yeah, like we're planning to do, you know, a costume. Send us your 
right. photo mm -hmm. of your best costume uh, that's one of our monsters. And uh, audience interaction is important. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then also we're so we have uh, six different uh, body types right now mm -hmm. for the, for the that you can pick and you know uh, pick pieces off of. Uh, we're going to push for nine with a certain stretch goals, mm -hmm. and then have surveys for those, what those will be, based on the audience response. Yeah. So, a curated service. So right. it's not a Bodie McBoat face monster. Oh, come yeah. on. In terms of... I mean, you know, <laughs> it, with overwhelming demand, we can make a boat, but I don't know what that would look like. Terrifying monster. Stops yeah. the woods. Um, so, turning from the game itself to, to your development, to your, uh, your company, Norwester, um... How did you guys get started in, in game development? Uh, what's your background, and, and what brought you to uh, be where you are today? Yeah, well, so Doug went to Ireland uh, like three years ago. We've been gaming together for like a decade. And we yeah, we've been playing games a long time. Side by side, playing WoW. Way back in oh, when. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lost a lot of time back then. <laughs> uh, I failed early. Look at hours played. Don't do it. No. Oh, no. <laughs> So yeah, I, I left the company for about six months, and uh, so I was away from my normal game group, the D and D group, and um, started thinking about okay, I can, I can try to make games. My background is in uh, math education, and so I'm, you know, I, I'm okay with that sort of stuff. The writing and the math, at least sometimes. And this is, you know, board games are about narrative, but also about having a mechanic that works, right? Mm -hmm. Taking the, um, getting a set of rules together that takes that takes that responsibility off some people at the table, and they can just sort of enjoy the system. And, and hopefully we provide some narrative and some, some setting for them to, to have a good time with. So. Yeah. so he came back with kind of the germ of an idea for a game that we uh, are working on called uh, Conduct, which is set aboard the Lusitania in 1909. It's a fully cooperative game. Um, you work with your fellow um, survivors, essentially, to figure out what's happened to the ship. Something, you're steaming into New York Harbor, something terrible has happened, and you and your fellow survivors are trying to either get off the ship or uh, defeat the ghosts or whatever else. Right, so it was, you know, a light RPG <coughs> mechanic, didn't require a DM, um, quick play, more two and a half hours. So it was, it was a d, &D alternative for people that don't have time to play D&D &D anymore, like us, yeah, right. per se, yeah. on a regular basis. And uh, we thought that the theme was good, that we, the setting of that, that, um, the the uh, end of the Victorian age, pre-modern uh, era, was sort of underexplored. It wasn't steampunk, what we were doing, and it was right. just we were taking real people and real settings, and they're crazy. And we thought, <laughs> okay, let's, they are, they are legitimately crazy. Let's yeah. examine what this is like. Yeah, anyway, we did that. And then we submitted to uh, PAX South Indie Showcase a couple of years ago, 2015. Mm -hmm. Got in, and they were like, okay, I guess we actually have to do this now. <laughs> and we got, you know, we produced a lot. And it was still like getting it to the finish line and then the next finish line. All those yeah, hurdles clear. Yeah, you know, after, after PAX South, we had talked with a bunch of other creators and read a bunch of stuff. And everyone said, you know, this conduct is huge. It's got, you know, 18 maps and minis and cards and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> it could break you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Uh, so we started working on some smaller projects first, and Stitches is the first one to make it to fruition. Right. Cool. Let's um, push you forward with other stuff. And... Yep. <laughs> uh, so what other games have you guys been playing? Both board, tabletop, computer, whatever. Just give us an idea of what kind of gamer you are. <laughs> yeah, I think both of us kind of fit more in that mid to heavy Euro preference. Mm. We played uh, Gallerist uh, most recently, and that is fantastic. It's beautiful, and awesome. simple choices lead to multiple branching options, and yeah. yeah it was great, yeah. Um, we've been playing that a fair amount of... We, we went through the Pandemic Legacy and the Risk Legacy, so that dominated a couple months of our time. Got Seafall sitting on the table. Yeah, <laughs> haven't, uh, it just arrived. Haven't had a chance to play it yet. So, I, I mean, that legacy thing is attractive to us. Yeah. We don't know. We're not there yet. So, um, Yeah, and then we had a bunch of uh, Kickstarter projects from last year come in, you know, in right. Bedford and Scythe and uh, um, Medici, mm -hmm. uh, which I hadn't read Reprint. before, which is, yeah, a yeah. fantastic little auction game. It's good. We've been playing some Euphoria, mm -hmm. 
and other like dice placement games. So, and Russian Railroads, we just played a couple times. Yeah, went through that a few times. We're trying to figure out, you know, I when I <laughs> one of the things I like to do is I get into a game and find a path, and I just need to figure out if that path is going to work. Mm, like on yeah. Merchants and Marauders, we play, and I'm a pirate every time <laughs> and i am never going to win that game playing a pirate it's, it's merchants and merchants yeah but i'm sure as heck going to try you know? <laughs> you're going to have a good time doing it right yeah yeah uh, and i don't i think being game designers has also changed how we approach games mm. i'm much more willing to just like just pick a path and go with it I, I, it probably won't work but at yeah. least i'll just you know hit all my first play through and we play so many you know, we play a, a lot of games on a a limited amount of time, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we don't get a lot of replays. Right. We get, like we'll play something twice, yeah. and um, you know, just being okay with like, well, I'm not going to win, maybe, but well, let's see how this path on this game works and see what the options are. Um, we played what, Bass recently. Oh yeah, and that's a that's where you know every player is playing their own complete game. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. Yes, I have. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. So that's our artist, uh, Kyle, Kyle Farron. Um, for Vast is, is doing the art for Stitches. Um, uh, and then I used to play a lot of video games. That doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. We both have pretty, kids, and now it's... It's a pretty yeah. common, common thread time. we hear from a lot of developers. I used to play a lot of games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to kind of bring things to a close, um, we like to find out what sticks out to developers uh, from other developers. So are there any other teams out there or projects that you think are doing something really cool or really innovative that you think people might not have heard of and should check out? Yeah. Um, well, Nicole, and so we're part of a group called the uh, Tabletop Co-op, which is basically a group of indie designers that uh, pool resources together to be at cons and stuff because it can be really expensive otherwise. Right. Um, and Nicole and Anthony, who are part of that, I can't remember their company name. Cardboard Fortress. There we go. Cardboard Fortress. They're coming out with uh, laser riders, on the eleventh, the day next next Tuesday. Spell with too many Y's. Yeah, all the Y's and Z's. Y's and Z's. Yeah, laser writers. Um, and that's a really interesting. It uses um, pieces similar to like the X Wing track um, oh, cool. to uh, your uh, what's the concept? I mean, it's like a Tron light bike game, yeah, yeah, or like yeah, playing yeah. snakes, right? You're trying to block people off, mm-hmm. trying to skid your way and to through certain gates. Um, it's fun. It's cool. It's the art's really nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Modular to the table you have. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, Happy Salmon. We just played. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't played Happy Salmon, I haven't. find Happy. Okay, find Happy Salmon. I will. And, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a great little party game. It's uh, it fits into a little like neoprene fish. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, for the zipper. <clears throat> so those are two we've seen recently. Uh, for for bigger stuff, I don't know, like. Yeah, we're still wrapping our heads around Scythe. is probably the biggest thing we've played yeah. recently. Cool. We've only gotten one playthrough of that yet, and, it, yeah. and um, it's... It's a big game. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, cool, that's, that's awesome. The, 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 everyone knows about Scythe, though. Everyone knows about Everybody. Scythe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, well, that's awesome. Well, thank you guys for taking time out before this Kickstarter. I'm sure you're oh. crunch, crunch time, but uh, for giving us a little bit of background about the thought process behind Stitches and your own background as developers um, to help people get a little bit of a window into your everyday. Um, so, Norwester Games, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Squishy cookie. Squishy rock. Squishy. 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 Squishy.